Hey there, Jeff Davis here. Wanted to bring up a topic of uh, IRAs, more importantly, uh, more specifically, self-directed IRAs and what they are and how you can use them to invest. So uh, first off, how did I learn about a self-directed IRA? I learned about it back in 2009. Uh, I had been working for a large global freight forwarder, putting away all of my retirement, right? Everything that we're supposed to do, uh, your 10, maxing out my 401k for many years. And then when I went to work for another organization, I rolled that 401k over. And then came the Great Recession, right? 2009. Uh, so that balance that was like $25,000 or whatever it was, uh, quickly depleted to nothing. And that's when I really became interested in real estate to begin with. Um, but I had gone to, uh, a couple of different, um, seminar learning events and learned about self-directed IRAs. Um, so I took that rollover. 401k, I went to Quest IRA, rolled it over, which it was half the value, of course. And from there, I was able to do hard money loans. Um, I could have bought gold or land, uh, whatever I wanted. Um, the most attractive thing to me at that time was the ability to control it. And so Today, we'll talk about what is it, right? What is a self-directed IRA? And then number two, how do you get a self-directed IRA? And number three, what type of investments are you able to do with it? Uh, and so we'll kind of cover all of that with this video. So what is it? An IRA is an individual retirement account. So if you are working at uh, an organization that provides you with a retirement plan, and you already have it, right? A 401k. When you leave there, then you can keep it and roll it over into a rollover 401k. Uh, they are the ones who are telling you how you can invest it. And it's going to be in a mutual fund or index fund. And that is going to follow the S&P 500, uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Index. And those are going to earn, you know, an eight to 10%. And what I personally do not like about that is the lack of control and visibility of fees. Uh, because all of these funds have fees and they're all managed by product managers. They're managed by Fidelity Investments funds. They are managed uh, by Vanguard. Uh, so they're going to have fees on the front end and they're going to have fees on the back end. Uh, so when I'm 67 years old, then I need that money because I'm finally going to have the opportunity to tap into whatever's left over. Not only at that point, am I going to get taxed because this was tax deferred to go in, but I'm also going to get hit with all the fees that they decide to assess. And I don't have any visibility to that. So I have no control over any of it. What a self-directed IRA is, is pulling that money into a governed, regulated account that's managed by a custodian. So it's still regulated. It's still monitored. Um, however, I get to dictate what investment class it goes into. So I can control if it goes into a mutual fund. I can control if it goes into a house. I don't get to pull the funds out. I don't get to enjoy those funds until I'm 67, until I'm retirement age, at which point it gets taxed if it is a traditional. But uh, I can control where that where those funds get placed as long as I am not the beneficiary. So two types of IRA. There are the uh, traditional, which acts just like a 401k and a Roth. 
And the difference between the two is that traditional is going to be tax at the end and a Roth is actually pre-tax. So that is tax dollars now that I get to remove. It gets to grow tax free. So if I put $5,000 into it today and it grows to $100,000, then I get to take out that $100,000 on 67. That 100,000 is coming out tax-free. So because I'm putting in after-tax dollars, that's the two types of self-directed IRAs you're gonna run into. So that's what a self-directed IRA is. Um, so how do you set one up? Uh, it's not overly complicated. You're going to find a, an IRA custodian. There's several around in the country. Uh, two big ones, uh, the most popular here in Houston, you have Quest IRA. And uh, there's one that I personally use at Vanta IRA. And get in touch with me. Um, you can click the link below get in touch. I'm happy to put you in touch with either one and see who suits you the best. Uh, IRA custodians are very transparent about their fees and they have fixed fee structures. Pay them on a quarterly basis uh, and you can pay them on an annual basis, but it's very transparent. It's upfront. You're going to pay fees no matter what in your retirement plan, but it's very nice to be, uh, told what your fee structure is going to be. So why do a self-directed IRA? A lot of reasons, like I just explained, is control. Uh, when you're doing a self-directed IRA, you, can, you have to complete that due diligence on where that money is going to go. Me personally, I like that it's not spread across massive corporations uh, that are run by individuals that I don't know with um, really different uh, guiding functions, right? Moral compasses that I may not agree with. Uh, I can keep the money localized and work with a, a rehabber in a very local market that I know. And with a property that I can go see, feel, and touch. And I can see the progress. Uh, I like that I can put it into an apartment complex that is only 20 miles from where I live. And I'm working with a group of investors whom I know. Uh, so, and, and so the benefit of getting two times the return of the S&P index is secondary to the fact that I have a lot more control of where I'm putting my money, a lot more. And it's with people who have a similar moral compass to what I do and that are not adhering to a DEI or an ESG. They are adhering to uh, keeping funds local in, whether it's Texas or Houston or Dallas or Arizona, whatever the market might be, we're all local and it's helping local businesses and a local community. And it's where we want it to be. And so my money's being used for good causes. Uh, and if that is not going the way that I want it, then it can be placed somewhere else in the very near or midterm future. That's why uh, as, as a, that is a massive, massive benefit to using a self-directed IRA. Big tax benefits that, that go along with using 401k, right? If, if you're investing with a Roth and you're growing your money, it would, should be a 2x multiple every four to five years. And if it's a traditional, you're still growing this thing. This is after tax dollars and, and you're growing it 2X uh, every four or five years. And, and so uh, you're able to enjoy the same tax benefits um, as, as you would with your traditional 401k. Types of investments. Real estate has a lot of different avenues. Uh, you can invest in land. Uh, you can do a flip. 
You can be the hard money loan on a flip, which I did a lot of. Uh, you can buy your rentals. Just be very, very cognizant that your IRA has to fund everything for that. And uh, being that this is a retirement account, everything has to come from that IRA. So whether it's paying a handyman to go do a simple repair uh, or uh, coming from an escrow account, the taxes, the insurance, every single item must be paid from that retirement account. Um, I have been advised and do advise that you do not buy a long-term rental uh, or a long-term property from your IRA because of some of the smaller expenses that must be funded just in the normal course of business. Separate from, say, a syndication where you might write a check as a passive income, uh, that's different. You're not funding on a continual basis. You're not managing that property, and it's much, much different. Uh, so multifamily syndications and other syndications. Notes are a very popular item that are funded through IRAs. You're, you're buying a note. You are being the mortgage broker. Uh, these are typically high interest deals. You know, you're, you are a first lien holder on a property or on a mobile home, uh, on a tiny home I've heard most recently. And these are generating eight to 13% to per year interest for anywhere from um, five to uh, seven years. And um, sorry, I had to take a break there. Um, so investing in buying the notes, high interest notes, and they can be on, um, various properties. They can even be loans on land and, uh, mobile homes, very common. Um, and those will be for terms, uh, three years, seven years. And, um, those are extremely common, provides cash flow, and, and it even has an, uh, uh, there's, there's a level of, of security with those uh, performing notes. A less common um, investment for the real estate side is tax liens. There's a quite a bit of work, you know, if you've, if you've got the time to do the due diligence on those tax liens, if you've taken a course, if you have a, a, a mentorship, if you're in a group uh, and you know the process, by all means, go through it and, and do it. And there's a significant amount of upside, but there is a, a time element and a research element, due diligence element to that. Same thing with uh, precious metals. Uh, there's less liquidity there and, 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 then, uh, and then crypto as well, right? Bitcoin and, and Ethereum and all the different crypto exchanges. Um, same thing as, as the stock market, right? All of the due diligence on that front side for the upside. Um, there, there's less cash flow, more, it's more of a trading exercise. So um, why do it? Um, there's a, a massive upside uh, than uh, a much larger upside to uh, working on your self-directed IRA specifically in, in, in a real estate or, you know, if you're going to go with the riskier side, to crypto um, and, and precious metals, then in keeping it with a standard mutual funds, which are trading, you know, in a 6%, maybe a 12% annual return, and then paying those fees on the other side. Uh, there's a much higher return. Why else? Control. I know I keep going to that but you have no control in the stock market. The, the stock market is manipulated and controlled by movers, by market movers. You can read any uh, book on how the stock market is, is moved. It is moved by insurance companies and mutual funds, uh, whichever way they choose. And uh, news articles, the news, if they are talking about a recession, the market is moving down. And if they're not, then it's moving up. 
you've got no control over that. So your mutual fund will go in that direction. However, if you're investing in a specific project with a specific group of people that you know, like trust, and they have a performance record on that specific type of project, you're, um, <laughs> I don't want to say guaranteed, but there is a level of confidence that you have in the performance of that project and its returns, whether it is a short-term single family flip uh, or a mid to long-term uh, multifamily exit and, and value add project or a land development deal with an experienced builder in an area that you're comfortable with the growth and the population density of that area. So all of these things you have control over and, and if you have confidence in and have done the due diligence of the group that's supporting the project and you like them, uh, and you like that community, these are reasons to use a self-directed IRA. Uh, why else do it? That's where you can tap into uh, a very large amount of capital. Uh, you, you know, as a, as a 40 year old, not all 40 year old professionals have access to a hundred thousand dollars, but their retirement funds do. Right. And so, uh, for me, I've, I've got multiple IRAs that I've been able to tap into to get into a lot of different projects. Uh, and so I'm, in, I'm able to direct hundreds of thousands of dollars into these projects and, and, and gain experience into how these different projects works. So um, how does it work? Um, and then some of the un, the cons, right? You don't get the liquidity. Um, yeah, I get a return. I don't, but my IRA does. Uh, some of the things to be mindful of is uh, UBIT, unrelated business interest tax. If the IRS deems it, and basically if there's leverage on a project, which with everything except for a single family that you are, providing the absolute whole loan on, uh, you're going to be subject to a UBIT. Uh, what is the overall penalty for this? It could be, uh, you know, if you're looking for something in the range of 22% IRR, you, you could be looking at 20 to 21%, right? Uh, about a 1% fee on that or not fee, but tax on that. So it'll affect you in that regard. Um, you do have uh, the ability to combine. So I've got me personally, I have education savings accounts for my kids that are in the, they perform the same way as Ross, right? I can put after tax dollars and they can grow tax free. And that's what they have. I have five kids, so I have five of those. I can do up to $2,000 per year. Uh, I have a Roth for myself, and then I have a traditional IRA for myself. And then, um, so that's seven accounts. Individually, uh, only two of those will qualify for any kind of substantial investment. $2,000 a year, two of them I had four or 6,000. Nobody wants a, $2,000 contribution to their deal. Everybody wants 50 or 100 or 75. But if you can control if you can control all of those together, then you have something substantial. So what you can do is create a uh, basically a joint venture partnership. And the members are your IRAs. And so you create a multi-member LLC which gives you another element of control to where all of these funds are and their contribution to this LLC dictates pro rata their membership interests, right? So if it's a hundred thousand dollar LLC and, and the ESA contributes $4,000, they have a 4% membership interest and, and vice versa and, and so on and so forth. Right. So, uh, we have an LLC that is a, uh, a partner in several syndications. 
and, and that those will grow, you know, tax free uh, as those projects, um, you know, uh, grow and, and appreciate, and the value adds, and they sell, and and ideally they will sell by four years from now, and then I'll close that LLC out and and exit. Um, and that's how you should structure it. That's one idea. It's not how you should, but that is an idea of what you can do, right? If you've got multiple IRAs and you just want to control it, you just direct it. You'll only have to sign off and do the um, appropriate uh, guidance from your uh, custodian forms by directing it into the LLC, you report the value of the LLC to your custodian once a year. Uh, and from there, the LLC goes into whatever you determine is, is uh, worthy. Uh, you cannot, you will be the manager. So I'm the manager of it, but I do not mix my funds. It's in a bank account that I don't do any work with. Uh, I don't receive any funds. I will never do anything with that bank and that institution just to make sure I don't break any law. So, you know, you're under some additional scrutiny when you're dealing with these SDRAs. Uh, be mindful of that. And we can talk about that in another video, how to be extremely careful. So all that, um, I will close it out there. If you have any questions about using a self-directed IRA for investing, uh, I've been doing it for about uh, 10 years now close to it, eight years. And um, I know the good, the bad, and the ugly, how to do some good due diligence, how to grow it. And it's um, it's interesting. You know, I have my favorite types of investments. I have some that I haven't done yet. Um, but I, I'm a big fan. And I can put you in contact with some various custodians and show you some good educational sources if you're interested. So take care. Like, share, and subscribe.